I'm a pit bull, and I approve this message. I love that intro music. Danny made that. You know, he stayed up all night doing that. How are you? How are you? Hey, buddy. What's, What's happening, buddy? everybody? What's the conversation with a pit bull live? Uh, we're broadcasting this week from uh, 44 Dogs. This is this is my lair or our lair. You know what I mean? We do so much work out of here. This is our uh, post-production facility. Um, we had some uh, issues over at uh, the RMC studio. And RMC, say, yeah. The, the cave that uh, we got in the... The hole in behind the Hollywood sign, but there was a mud slide, so they over there digging. California, dig man, what are you gonna do? Yeah, they over there digging the mud out. So you know, Danny and I said, well, wait a minute, we <laughs> just go back to our roots, man. Said better y'all than me. That's let's go over right. to let's go over to my lab. We're, we're right. fully functional. You know what I mean? We couldn't Skype anybody in this week, so there are a couple things that you won't get. But what we do have is more comfortable couches. We got stuffed animals. We got right. a Shogun outfit in the back. You know what I mean? So this is this is where we get it all in. But thank That's you guys right. for joining us once again. We're uh, we were like, hey. Don't let other people's problems mess up our flow That's because right. That's right. we know how much uh, you guys mean to us and vice versa. So we're just going to do the show. But uh, Foster, we got some awesome guests that are going to join us today. Oh, who's yeah. who's uh, in the house today? Well, first we got Josh Liddy. Uh, he's returning from last week because he just went and had the debate in Riverside with the city council. And uh, he's coming in to give us the recap on what happened with that. You yeah, know? yeah. And I wanted to see what what Josh was like. You know, we was, he was getting revved up to go talk to some irrational people about some irrational subjects and drop some science on them. And I just want to see what these irrational people had to say to such a rational, well thought well, you know, person. You, this, you know what I'm I'll saying? I'll tell you this: uh, as rational or irrational as the whole thing was, it didn't turn out well for the dog. But. We'll bring Josh in, and we'll we'll go more into that. And also, we have uh, Toriano Sanzoni. That's right. And uh, he's a homeboy from Chicago, you know. So uh, he's an animal trainer. You know God. what I mean? An author, hey, a master a, dog trainer. Hey, I got his book here. He wrote a book. Okay, and you know it was amazing because you know I I got the book and then he's like, wait a minute, a black guy can write. It's like, hey, that's crazy. Oh, man, that's he's amazing, doing he's doing know? some amazing so, stuff. Hey, he's gonna come right. sit on the couch with us and I'm gonna pick his brain a little bit about what he does and he's uh doing some awesome work uh, get, developing some therapy dogs and training some dogs and he just got off a, a you know a, a tour a animal training tour with one of his buddies and stuff. So we're gonna talk about that and, as well. Right, and I you know I wasn't even gonna have him on, but you know I got this vibe from. Uh, Betty Jean Williams Freeman, she said, well, you better have my grandson on that show. <laughs> okay, so. I think you were just trying to get your gear stepped up. You said, man, he also designs clothes, and you got a name like Vidal Sassoon Jordash, like Sanzoni, or whatever. He's like, man, I'm going to step my game up. Speaking of gear, thanks for the shirt, man. Hey, Foster Foster hooked me up with the Bound Angels. Uh, man, they're doing some wonderful work, but you they got some got cool uh, gear or whatever, you know what I'm saying, even for the big guys. So you guys go step your game check up at boundangels.org, you know what I mean? Oh, totally. But uh, before we get into the – the really fun stuff. I know we're having fun already, but we always like to send a shout out to um, not only people that, that are um, in our family and, and people that we love that have either lost people or um, that have passed away, uh, whether they're four-legged or two-legged. And um, unfortunately, this week, uh, oh. Cheryl's friend, uh, Lisa, Lisa passed away, Lisa, passed away yeah. didn't she? Oh, my God. That was so sudden. We just spoke about it last week that she was ill and asking everybody to pray for her. And in... 
you know, so Lisa passed, and, um, you know, uh, Cheryl's been on top of that. And I know you guys, if you're fans of the show, you know you've been following it on Facebook and stuff. And so what I wanted to do personally, I just wanted to, for Lisa and her family, I just, well, for Lisa mainly, is I wanted to do, uh, you know, Foster Carter's rendition of Danny Boy. And, uh, oh, Danny, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, we don't want Lisa to get up out of her grave and be doing the zombie walk for me singing, boy. So, <laughs> Lisa, uh, we love you. You know, now you're walking do uh, God's dogs. Man, and, there's so you many know, dogs up there that now you get to touch and do some Wallace, wonderful things. She's hanging out with Wallace Diesel, and Rosie. This all of them, morning. like my dog, Bolo, like all the Jesus. dogs that have passed away. That's right. They just got a superhero yep. up there in heaven with them. So, yep. um, Cheryl, we love you. And uh, if you guys go to Facebook, there's a memorial page uh, set up for Lisa. So uh, just go look for that. Lisa Casavant, uh, she was just a wonderful person and a fan of our show, Sam. We wanted to send our love out That's to right. you. Also, um, there's some, some dogs that passed this week, unfortunately. And, um, you know, Rita sent us some pictures. The first dog was uh, named Xena. Uh, it, was a, it was a husky, and she belonged to uh, Melanie Razor Hicks. And, uh, you know, Xena walked up to her door over 11 years ago and Unfortunately, Zena passed this week, so we wanted to send some love out mm -hmm. to her. Um, husky. Yeah. Is that husky. like big dog like you? They can be. You know what I'm saying? They're not as fly decked out with the gear like me, but, oh, you know, okay. they're they're pretty big dogs. Also, uh, Ethan of Panda Paws Rescue, um, he was just a gentle soul. You know, everybody loved. Uh, unfortunately, passed away, and he'll be missed. And also, um, Coffee of uh, the West Side German Shepherd Rescue of Los Angeles passed away. Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, he was, he was, a uh, coffee was rescued from Lancaster shelter out there. He was just a young pup, and their family adopted them, you know, for 12 years, you know what I mean? And, uh, raise my you know, we just want to raise our, uh, you know, our pit bull energy drink to you guys and let you know that you're loved. And, That's right. Uh, we're some, gonna, some wonderful souls have passed, but they've joined some other ones up there. So, all right, we're going to pull out the poison. <laughs> right. You know what all I right. mean? Um, go, Danny. but anyway, to everybody. Uh, Peace. You guys are watching Conversation with a Pitbull Live. We'll be yeah. right, we'll wait, be wait, right back. Before we go, we got one, because we're coming back, we are doing our, I want to say this one thing. Uh, because of uh, all these laws in Fred Cray, we, we, we don't get Fred to Skype in with his segment. But next week, guys, come back. With, but Fred was making me aware of, besides the thing in Riverside, it's a lot of stuff. I told you people last week, you know, the pit bull world, the pit bull dog is under attack. And you guys better get serious and you better get active. So on that note, um, we've decided, you know, we started with the co conversations with a pit bull. But we are announcing officially, and you guys are going to know more and more and more. Every week we're going to be putting out more about this. But I began to write the feature film, um, the fight in the dog, which is the Sergeant Stubby story. We're doing Sergeant Stubby, hands down. It is in development. We're going to make that movie, okay? And we're going to have uh, everybody involved. We're taking the media approach. Conversations with people. Join the friends and media team because we're gonna, I'm going to take everybody and we're going to we're going to take the Hollywood media approach. We're going to have Gordon Shell in there. We're going to have Josh in there. We're going to have Rebecca in there. We're going to have everybody in the media. We're going media. We're going to put the pit back in the pictures. All right. We'll be right back. You're watching Conversations with a Pit Bull Live, a show about dogs, the people that love them, and real issues. Brought to you by Pit Bull Energy Drink. Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. What kind of dog uses the phone? A Dalmatian! <laughs> Please support your local rescue groups. They do more to support your community than any others. Hey guys, all right, so we're back here in uh, the lab of 44 Dogs, Danny's Joint, and I'm here with Mark and Martin is just one cool pit bull. He's just laid back. Uh, and we're with Josh Liddy. Josh came back today to give us the recap on the Riverside City Council debate. And um, that's something that everybody should know about. And if you don't, uh, go on the web. You know, we lost out. They voted 
down and um, you know you can check out my post Facebook and uh, Google Plus to find out you know how I feel about it but let me first say you did a good job man I'm gonna watch the rest of it today oh, but thanks. what I saw was awesome and uh, Fred Craig you know our all of our the Pitbull community's le legalese godfather yeah uh -huh. uh, he he just raved about you you know and for a guy that is in court all the time and does it for a living saying that you did excellent that's like you can't get any better praise yeah it was definitely it was high praise i talked to fred last night and um you know super nice guy he had very kind things to say and it you know it made me feel good like i actually represented the dogs well and um de people can definitely check out the video it's on the press enterprise website and it was about a 40 minute debate um, numerous topics and it's definitely worth watching because there's so many aspects to what they're trying to do and I was just there trying to give uh, what I would feel as a true representation of uh, the mentality behind a law like this so please please check it out and I, I appreciate uh, people that watched it and are telling me privately that they're proud of uh, the things that I said it means a lot and um, is very important to me because representing the dogs is uh, of, of utmost importance. We'll be right back with Josh Liddy after a word from our sponsor. You're watching Conversations with a Pitbull Live, a show about dogs, the people that love them, and real issues. Brought to you by Pitbull Energy Drink, available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. So, so what do you think? Um, is the reason that they ultimately, I mean, they were kind enough to give you time to yeah. come in. and But do you think they had made up their mind already? Oh, yeah. Before, before the votes, um, I was at county. I was physically at, at county board of supervisors meeting. Prior to them voting, I, I gave a public comment. And I was there for about three hours. And um, well, the meeting was about three hours, and the vibe coming out of that after they voted was that their minds were certainly made up. Two weeks later, uh, city took the law verbatim and passed the exact same law. So, uh, with things like this, you you definitely see that uh, their minds going into these things are made, and it's kind of a dog and pony show publicly when people come and give comments. A lot of these guys aren't even listening to you. Like, my public comment, for example, I took full example of the three minutes that they gave me. I was like rapid fire, um, or tried to be, with, with, with points and uh, what would I consider facts. And it, a lot of times it's just in one ear and out the other. So that's the vibe that you get um, at the actual meetings. The dynamic yesterday when sitting with the city councilman, it was... Uh, very interesting because they did give me that platform mm -hmm. i we were able to have a back and forth which you hardly ever get right with the with, uh, with the politician and he was actually a nice guy you know um meeting him privately talking to him beforehand and granted you know we spent less than an hour together and i don't know how much of that was genuine or not but um i you know i appreciated the 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 right. ability to debate right. with them exactly i mean you know I, I mean he's a politician you know the only thing they're doing is going for votes you know they answer to their constituency because when the guy says um what the public perception is and then first thing that i say is well who's public Exactly. You know and what public is this and, the, and who's driving that perception yeah exactly <laughs> you know and i mean do and what and do we go on what public perception because there was one at one point in in this country you know public perception was you know all black people were criminals all right. black people did this and all you know what i mean it's like so when somebody says p public perception it's like well what's the truth right you see <laughs> no let's not deal with perce well, perception that's the that's the problem well speaking about public perception one of the most uh stunning parts of the debate in my opinion, I was actually surprised when it actually happened. And when I talked to Fred afterwards, he said the same thing was that uh, when we were discussing the law and 
how they were able to pass it. And I was point I pointed out repeatedly that they already had a mandatory spay and neuter law already passed on the books for Riverside City for all dogs. It just was going unenforced. They were unable to un they were unable to enforce it. They're not enforcing it, but the law's still on the books. And then they want to go and create a mandatory spay and neuter for pit bulls specifically on top of that which is a point, pointless act because right. the law's already there. Pit bulls are dogs. They exactly. fall into the, the first law. And, um, you know, he kind of, we were like, well, why isn't that enforced? He kind of dodged that question. Right. Um, and then it got to the point where we were asking him, well, wh why is this necessary? And he says, um, well, to do it with all, with all dogs would be too difficult because there would be too much public outcry. Um, <laughs> it takes a lot of political will to get that done. It's easy to just do it with pit bulls because the stigma's out there, so people can accept it. And I right. and I and I, that's when I got angry and interrupted right. him basically and was like, "So you're telling me that you're going to take advantage of the ignorance of people and the 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 um, bad rap that these dogs get? Right. You know this exists. You're going to take advantage of that and push this law, and you know you can get it through based on that. That's wrong. This is an unjust law. This is an unjust action." Uh, but the fact that he admitted that right. on camera, right, and that's out there forever now because whether they take that video down or not, I got a copy of it. That's right. And but that was stunning. That yeah. was a, that's a, and that's that's a, that's that's a usually... pathetic, uh, pathetic uh, example of why this stuff is done. So, just, so Josh, just for uh, real quick, the people that don't know what we're talking about, that didn't, that aren't familiar, someone's just watching this for the first time. Tell them exactly what the situation is in Riverside County, California. Well, uh, in Riverside County and Riverside City, both uh, the law that was put forth is a mandatory spay and neuter law for pit bull type dogs, um, which sounds like a good thing uh, if you're just generally speaking about spay and neuter in the general sense. Spay and neuter is a good thing. I promote it. My dogs are spayed and neutered. People should get their dogs spayed and neutered. But it should be voluntary. There should be no laws um, mandating that. And then when you get into the breed-specific aspects of that, um, it's stereotyping dogs that you can't even scientifically identify. But all this stuff came to the forefront not because um, they want to do a responsible thing, bring down kill numbers. That, those are the public talking points. But pit bulls are being vilified in the process. All, these, all, all this stuff's being brought to the table um, in response to attacks, maulings that are happening, uh, media covering these things, calling it pit bulls when there's no evidence that there were pit bulls. Even if it was a pit bull, they're taking one, two, three pit bulls and vilifying millions of pit bulls based on the actions of two or three. And when you go to these things, and you attend these meetings and you watch these politicians talk about the dogs prior to voting, which is what most people don't get to see. They just think, they just read about it in the paper afterwards and like, well, we passed the mandatory spay and neuter law. That's a good thing on a, on a vague general sense. Okay. But if you go and you watch these people talk about pit bulls, they're vilifying the pit bulls for hours prior to voting. There's probably 50 times in Riverside County alone where I sat there and they called these dogs aggressive in a general sense not a specific individual dog in a general sense my dogs everybody's dog the implication is these dogs are aggressive inherently dangerous um their genetics are different all this nonsensical stuff that they can't even prove sensationalized stuff that pro bsl people constantly push down people's throats and then this gets repeated in the media pit bulls are taking a huge hit off of these laws and the only reason it's not a ban is because California state law uh, says that you can't ban a dog. If that provision didn't exist, this wouldn't be a breed-specific mandatory right. spay and neuter law. This would be a breed-specific ban. ban. That's right. Well, Josh, we got to get out of here. Um, <laughs> we got a sleeping pit bull down. <laughs> hey, wake up. They trying to make vicious, you. Vicious, vicious pit to make here. you be a sound, baby. Um, so... Josh, thank you for coming again, man. And, oh, wow. you know, we'll have you back. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the reason that you better get up. You better get involved. 
We need you. Support us. Support the show. Support Sway Love. See you later, and we'll be right back. I'm Dr. Dave and welcome to Taking Care of Your Pet. In our last video, we discussed a parasitic skin condition called demodectic mange. This time we'll talk about another type of, or another form of mange called sarcoptic mange, also known as scabies. This type of mange affects dogs but humans and cats, although rarely, can be transiently infected. Unlike demodectic mange, sarcoptic mange is contagious. Humans are at risk if exposed to an infected pet, and a human harboring these mites can infect a mite-free animal. Consider sarcoptic mange if you note sudden and intense itching in your dog. The scabies mite burrows into the superficial layer of skin, where it secretes allergenic substances. This in turn causes an allergic reaction in certain dogs. We test for sarcoptic mange in much the same way that we do for demodectic mange. We will scrape the lesions we find with a scalpel blade and then check the scraping under a microscope. This mite is much tougher to find than a demodectic mite. I have read that if we are lucky, we may find mites perhaps 20% of the time. Persons who acquire sarcoptic mange mites from dogs may experience patches of inflamed, itchy, irritated skin or small papules. Remember, mites are species specific and they can't complete their life cycle on a different species of animal. Any mites that a person picks up from a dog will die in a few days. This does not negate a visit to a physician if the case is serious enough or concerns you at all. One way dog owners can check for sarcoptic mange in their dog without getting it themselves is to rub the edge of the floppy part of your dog's ear. The anatomical name for this structure is the pinna. It's the floppy part of their ear, um, or pinnae, P-I-N-N-A-E for plural. If your dog has scabies mites, you may notice a scratching action in one of his rear limbs. This is called the pinnal pedal reflex and is common in dogs suffering from these kinds of mites. We treat sarcoptic mange with many of the same drugs we use for demodectic mange. The drugs are given at different dosage levels and the course of treatment is usually shorter. Remember, please, please have your veterinarian check your dog and calculate the dosage of whatever drug he or she prefers to use. It is easy to be tempted to give too large a dose and some of these drugs can be very harmful to certain breeds of dogs. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or specific concerns you may have about any illness, anything we've talked about in the past. And remember, none of these videos are meant to be a substitute for a visit to your vet. We're just trying to acquaint you with what we see and what's going through your vet's head so you kind of understand where he's trying to go with you and what, it, what we're trying to accomplish. So this is Kiara, one of the shelter dogs. Um, you may see some red streaks on her side. She has what the shelter people call happy tail. She wags her tail so much she wears the tip of it off. Maybe one of these times we'll talk about how we handle that here. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for taking care of your pet. Watching Conversations with a Pit Bull Live, a show about dogs, the people that love them, and real issues. Brought to you by Pit Bull Energy Drink. Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're watching Conversations with a Pit Bull Live. 
here at our second stage, you know, the home of 44 it. Dogs, my spot. Uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in or whatever. Today I'm with my boy Toriano, What's the up, Wolf you? Keeper. Ow. You know, one of the most talented, uh, you know, animal trainers in the world, you know what I mean? And he's hey, got his sir. dog here, Martin, who's fresh out. Uh, you know, just rescued him. Right, uh, fresh out of doggy jail. Man, tell me a little bit about Martin, first of all, before we get into what you do. Like, Man, Martin is right out of um, Burbank Animal Shelter. Word. I was going there, checking him out, me and my friend Joel to Bush. What's up, Joel? JT. And um, we got him out, we sprung him. And then he's going, this is like week two. Man. He's just hanging out like a boss. Dude, he's chilling on the couch. Chilling he's on couch. TV. I mean, look at the capacity right. for these dogs and the capacity, <laughs> the capacity of people. All you got to do is just go down to your local animal shelter. You're going to see the majority of them are going to be pit bulls, mm -hmm. but some of them are as cute and obedient. I mean, he's had this dog for a week, and of course he's a, a dog trainer, so you know his disposition is going to be, uh, you know, super, super on point. point but average, but you know, he wasn't a bad boy coming out, and there's no. plenty of these dogs out there looking for you to come down and and rescue them. So Absolutely. make sure you go get in contact with your local shelter, your local rescue group, as a matter of fact, because they have experience with the dogs that are in the shelters and stuff. So Absolutely. anyway, uh, tell everybody about like. What is the wolf keeper like, and why are you go? Why do you go as the wolf keeper? Um, the concept of wolf keeper is is to get people in the mindset of dog ownership isn't just owning a dog; it's something more serious. You know, there's a lot of philosophy. There's a lot of just a spiritual connection. You know, people love their dogs. A lot of times, people don't realize they love their dogs until their dogs, unfortunately, you know, pass on a doggy heaven. So when I say wolf keeper, I like to get people thinking about the seriousness of owning a dog, the responsibility. Of having a dog, which makes yeah, you it's like Pulp Fiction. You calling the wolf? Right. Oh, you calling the wolf? <laughs> you know it's, it's getting serious. Oh, that's you know true. I, mean? I forgot about Pulp. <laughs> right. Calling the wolf. Right. It's making a series where you're 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 a shepherd. You're the keeper of your flock, which is you know dogs and dogs are descendants of wolves. It goes back to the caveman and the wolf. You know, so not like wolf like in an aggressive way, but wolf in as, as in take dogs serious. You know, because true stat. You know, every year eight hundred thousand people are critically injured. You know, every day one hundred twenty one people are injured by a dog, you know, of that 44,000 children get bitten in the face, you know, so it's serious when you own a dog, I mean, whether it's a chihuahua or a big dog, get them trained, love them, and be their keeper. So Wolf Keeper Global, that's your company, right? That's my company. Um, the what is it that you do? Like, I mean, people don't even, I mean, I know you just hang out with us and <laughs> bring, bring, bring good looking dogs and right. stuff and whatnot, right. but tell me, tell me a little bit about Wolfkeeper Global. Um, Wolfkeeper Global was founded by me and my, my friend Wes Shook, who's in Mankato, Minnesota. And what we've done, is we've um, this summer alone, we, we were in Brooklyn, New York for a month. We were in Mankato, Minnesota. We were in Chicago, which is my hometown, Chi-Town. Uh, your shy town. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh, you guys were on a dog Love, training Foster, tour. Right. You guys were out on a dog training tour. Dog training tour. So we set up um, Wolfkeeper affiliates in Brooklyn, Chicago, Minnesota, and now out here in LA. We're now I'm uh, relocated out here to sunny LA. You know, yeah, man, we're glad to have <laughs> you. There's refuge of these Chicagoans. What here. was the What was the purpose of the tour? Like, what were you guys hitting the road for? Um, one, a couple things. One was I wanted to see, you know, the difference of. Training a dog in Brooklyn versus Mankato, Minnesota versus Chicago. We were down in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, out here in L.A. So, for example, in Chicago, we have tons of condos. So you have certain issues that go along with dogs in elevators and dogs in cold space. You know, in Minnesota, you have people, a lot of dogs going to be cooped up, you know, in the house all the way until spring because now it's starting to get cold. You guys out here have so much room for dogs to run. You don't have the backyard, and dogs have backyards, so yeah. they might not get as much um, socialization unless you're bringing them to a dog park but you're not dealing with you know walking down the sidewalk with so that was to give just a perspective to, to deepen my own understanding of dogs across the country because each geographical region based upon you know cultures and things dogs are trained different ways in different places do, de depending on where they live and then also too I wanted to spread the word you know of train your dog and to say that I'm not just sitting in my own little box and vacuum in Chicago but you know we went out to Brooklyn we were there for a month we we're out in Minnesota for a month you know now we're here and you you have to get out and and, yeah, and, I mean, that's, and live it that's what that's what me and me and me and Foster have been out on the road right um you know just just you we, we were in your backyard yeah. in Chicago right. Indiana and um it's just interesting how geography can not only affect animals but also the people that love them or people that that work with them you know what I mean Absolutely. um I know like out here 
uh, like you said, it is a little bit, there's a lot more space, so we deal with um, different type of issues. But I know one of the things you do is you train animals for um, to be therapy dogs. And I know that some of the things that, that, that the therapy dogs have to, um, some of the skills that they have, deal with things like elevators and mm -hmm. and slick floors and things that you you know regular people might not even think about that right. they have to be aware of and and have the skill set for and that i guess that would have um a lot to do with the the region that they're in you know? well think about it when i'm in i'm in brooklyn you know you're in new york a city of eight million eight million people you're walking down the street with a dog you're walking down the street with a bully breed he has to be comfortable walking through a lot of people. Absolutely. You know, what you guys won't deal with that in California. We don't walk anywhere. We don't walk anywhere. Right? <laughs> He'd you know be like, man, my car's right. across the street. Right. Let's, let's go take a let's go take a, a a drive over there. Drop me off, bro. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more with uh, Toriano when we get back. We're just getting into it or whatever. You're you're here with Danny Mason from uh, Conversation with a Pitbull Live and my dog, the Wolf Keeper. We'll be right back after these messages. You're watching Conversations with a Pitbull Live, a show about dogs, the people that love them, and real issues. Brought to you by Pitbull Energy Drink. Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. It's Daniel Mason here with Conversations with a Pitbull Live. We've just been chilling out. I know you're checking out my fly gear. This is the Bound Angels shirt my buddy Foster hooked me up with. He went to a, a, a nice... Um, you know, um, they had a they had a big gala that they put on, and he brought me back this shirt and this hat. Bound Angels, they do uh, work, try to give some of the rescues and animal shelters and um, humane society organizations some tangible tools to do what they do. So if you get a chance, go out to uh, boundangels.org and check them out. But I'm here with my buddy uh, today, the Wolf Keeper. Toriano, he's visiting us from Chicago, but now he's a transplant. He's going to be hanging out here on the west side for a little bit. Um, Toriano's a, among other things, is an animal trainer, and um, he brought his dog uh, Martin, who we just rescued recently uh, from the from the shelter, with him. Uh, Toriano, tell us a little bit about the the animal training. Like, how'd you get into it? What does an animal animal trainer do? What do you do? What are some of the things that go into the animal training? Um, I started training honestly back 1978. My mom, she she trained dogs. I grew up with five Afghan hounds. Um, so in my family, they, they've been involved with, you know, acquiring professionally trained dogs. So I've been seeing dogs train on a professional level mm -hmm. my entire life. And I got my first dog in 1996 that I trained myself. You know, I was in the music industry for 10 years and then said, hey, I want to train dogs. So I studied, I apprenticed under James Morgan, who owns Chicago um, Academy of Dog Training. And then I've just been doing this for 13 years and... My training is specifically, I focus on a lot of what I call dog yoga, um, and that's 23 positions I've come up with, which gets the dog comfortable with being handled. This he's a this is a testimonial of it right here. This doggy right here is all yoga out. I stretch him out a lot. I do a lot of cardio with the dogs, just a lot of just energy work with them. Um, I'm a I'm a Reiki master, so I get the dogs very comfortable with being handled by anyone, and then I go in on the back end and teach the dog how to respond to the obedience commands being sit down stay come heal no all those but the yoga and the cardio gets this because right now i didn't have to teach this dog how to down he wants to down he wants to sit he wants to yeah, relax he's chilling out do you work with all uh types of breeds i know martin here's a, a pit but uh do you work with all breeds of dogs i work with everything from the exotics from a oswak to a Presa canario fela brasilero all the way to just yorkie to german shepherd labrador i mean that's the other thing too when I, my moniker the wolf keeper or people that we train to be wolf keepers that we're very well mastered with all breeds because it's very important when training dogs that you understand the breed makeup the genetics you know what blood what traits are blood, bred into bloodlines so you can figure out how you need to help each dog one of the things, uh, cause, I mean, our show is about education, and a lot of times we're trying to get people that aren't necessarily um, in the dog community or they're not really well-versed with mm -hmm. uh, things about dogs, just some basic information. So can you tell people some of the basic stuff, like why is getting your animal trained, getting your dog trained important? Like why is it important to have a trained dog or to um, get involved with somebody that trains dogs specifically to help them with their animals that's that's a great question maybe what Danny. type of problems does it create right. if you don't or you know why why should people get it's, their animals trained it's a great that's a great question i always tell people that everyone likes this stuff called money 
right? We are, it comes in handy, and an untrained dog is going to cost you about three to four thousand dollars on average. And how does that happen? Is you come home one day and the dog has urinated or defecated on your brand new carpet, so you got to scrub and clean it. They chewed up your iPhone. They chewed up the couch. They did something that will accumulate. Versus the trained dog doesn't have the opportunity to destroy things, so it saves you money. So just economically, first and foremost. Secondly, it will cost you money. Um, in a lot of municipalities in Chicago, specifically, a scratch is considered the bite. So if your dog jumps on me, it scratches me, and then we could have to file a bite report. But I might forget about doing a bite report if we settle right on the street. Which you know, today I say, hey, Danny, your dog scratched me and my child. Thousand dollars, I'll walk away. So. Untrained dogs have a tremendous. Who's got amount. extra thousand dollars laying around? I know I don't. <laughs> I don't either. You know what I mean? I don't want to spend money unnecessarily. So what I do have laying around is this cool customer right here. He's knocked out. We're gonna get him a CPAP machine. He got <laughs> <laughs> this cat is snoring up a storm. You know what I mean? Luckily, uh, maybe you guys got surround sound out there watching this on your uh, high power, uh, you know, computer and whatnot. One of the other things I wanted to talk about, uh, bro. I was talking about my fly gear, Bound Angels or whatever, but I'm noticing in your fly gear that it. crest is kind of jumping it. out at me tell we me about the, the the clothing line you got going on man have, this is dope we have the wolf keeper apparel line that's coming you know where you'll be able to get wolf keepered up um and it's just, not just for for people though i was looking people. at this right here you get it for your dog what is this too. bro your dog can have the wolf keeper apparel for they can have the vest on because we want people when you're walking down the street to be able to recognize and say hey that's the sign of a trained dog, you know, so that's why it was also important to take this show out on the road, you know, and say we're not just talking it, we're living it. So we lived in, in Brooklyn, we were out in Minnesota, we were out in Chicago, we went down to Mexico, now we're here in L.A. We're going to keep on going from state to state. I'm going to be based here, but we're going to travel all around the world to this brand is recognized as, hey, that's a trained dog. We have to turn it up as far as getting people to recognize that they need to train. their. If you own a dog, you should get your dog trained less problems and you enjoy them more because they're able to go everywhere when you have a completely trained dog they're able to constantly constantly you know be a joy to your life versus the dog it, that's antiquated the concept of having a dog just sitting in the house all day one of the things i wanted to ask you um because you one of the things you do is train dogs to become therapy dogs yes. and is that something that's like is that an official thing like like my dog is an official therapy dog and it's like certified or is it like you know, is that something that, like, you know, kind of like a preacher or whatever, you could take, like, wow. a two-week two, two, two week online class and right. now all of a sudden I'm Dr. Right. So-and-so, like, right. Bishop, whatever. Like, right. is it, tell, tell me what that, is the process that, or what is the, what, what is a therapy dog? And is, I, it, is it something that's official or? That's maybe? another great question. I mean, according to the Department of Justice, the ADA, a therapy dog is a dog that serves a, a specific task that helps you. So your this dog might be trained to come break in my couch. You know what I'm saying? Couch, like, right? <laughs> Relax. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Martin. <laughs> right. Here, man, put this vest put on, bro. You're doing your thing today. Uh, <laughs> right. No, my bad. Right. But as long as long as a dog as long as a dog serves some purpose, then that can be considered a therapy dog. So he might the, the dog might be trained to lead you out of the room when you have an episode of um, PTSD. Um, occurring that dog might come put his paw in your lap when he sees when you're when you're different levels in your body your um, pheromones change in your body that shows that you're depressed so it therapy dogs we, we use the term therapy dog but dogs have been performing therapy for years and upon years that's why we love dogs because they make us feel great so I'm suggesting that everyone, if you have a dog, your dog should be therapy certified. And that's different from service dogs. Service dogs are dogs that are utilized for blind. Those dogs know up to 60 to 70 commands. That's a lot of, a whole nother ball of wax of training. We're talking about therapy, emotional support dogs, which basically that's what dogs do, period, without having to have a fancy vest on. But we do want to make it official. And how do you officially do that is where you can go to like the Delta Society or um, other companies that have quote unquote official tests for the therapy dog tests, but there it's not we're not a regulated industry. So how we do it is that you would take your canine and citizen test, which is administered through American Kennel Club. They've been around for a hundred years. You take that test. You take my test that I've created, which is very diligent. You know I've been doing this for 13 years. My mom's a school teacher for 35 years, so that runs through my blood. So my right. test is real. And then because I'm signing off that before you can get my vest, my document, my identification card, one of these shirts, 
Official. And when I'm going to send you to a AKC CGK9 Citizen Evaluator, no one has all those components. And I'm saying in addition to that, go and take the Delta Society's test or and take the TDI test. So you have all those documents. Then your dog can go on planes, hospitals, schools, anywhere. And then you just enjoy your dog differently when you literally can bring them everywhere. My goal that's, one day is to see dogs in rush everywhere. There should be yeah, dogs no, that's what I'm, sitting at home. That's what I'm talking about. Step your, step your dog game up, man. Step and, your and dog when game when up. When you want to step your dog <laughs> game up, man, just like Pulp Fiction, you got to call the wolf. Call the wolf. Saying? We're going to come back really quick with just a little bit more with Toriano what I wanted to talk this brother is an author too we're going to talk a little bit about his book and he mentioned a little bit about the PTSD that he's doing some stuff some amazing stuff with the um, people in the armed forces that are uh, serving our country so we'll be right back in a, in a second you guys are watching conversations with a pit bull live you're watching conversations with a pit bull live a show about dogs the people that love them and real issues brought to you by pit bull energy drink Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. Conversation with a pit bull live. We're here at my lab, 44 Dogs, deep buried under the Hollywood sign in some cave that we pipe sunlight down to. You know what I mean? We're in here getting it in with my buddy Toriano, master dog trainer. And not only that, he's an author, too. He's got this book, The Wolf Keeper, A Wolf Keeper's Guide to Training a Dog. Yes. That's awesome, man. I mean, my 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 father was a was a teacher as well. We got over 30 years in the game. Oh, so wow. yep. anytime I can see somebody synthesize what's in their mind in a, a tangible medium, mm -hmm. I mean, it always impresses me. Whether it's a script, whether it's a, a photograph, or a movie, mm. whatever it is. So this is I haven't even read it yet, but you dropped this off. It's not signed. I'm gonna get mine signed. But when I do get it signed, I'm gonna really dive into this. Tell me a little bit about this book, bro. Um, th this book I wanted to write. You know, as a means, because I, I had clients saying, well, my dog's doing it, for, he does it for you, but he doesn't do it for me. So I said, let me take everything that's in my mind and put into a book so that people can have no excuses on why they're not training their dog. So, and also, too, I give my philosophy of things that I saw and experienced growing up, seeing how the dog um, industry has changed from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to current day. And just to, you know, to write my name in the cave like cavemen did, you know, I'm here, you know, the wolf keeper. I, I document it. So, you know, when I document, when I tour, you know, such as this, you know, visual documenting video, it makes me want to keep elevating because these philosophies were written in 2008 and now I have a new form of philosophy, which now is like dog yoga, you know, cardio and energy work as a means of training and this guy right i mean look at this guy i mean he's a perfect example of what happens when you do doggy yoga on him i mean he is like went from the shelter to just flat out he's like why is this puppy so calm like that and foster said it best when he saw him he just like sat down like why is he so calm you know those are i talk about dog yoga in the book you know dogs getting a dog comfortable with being handled once you get a dog comfortable being handled they'll do anything for you um, you don't really have to train them. So that was the purpose of writing the book. And the book's available on iTunes. That was a big deal for me because you can't just throw anything on iTunes. So go download this book, Toriano Sands, only Wolf Keeper's Guide to Training a Dog on iTunes. So you can listen to it in audio form, too. And that's awesome, man. We have the luxury of having a brother out here with us, so I can just hit him on the phone or tell him to come by the lab and get my education up. But if you're all the way around the world and you got Internet access, brother, you can get yourself a copy of this. And uh, we're going to work on some uh, multimedia and stuff and just start doing some creative things with uh, Toriano and our buddy Josh and everybody that came through today. Um, anyway, one thing I wanted to talk to you about quick before we go is uh, you mentioned the PTSD stuff. And you, you've, I know you've been doing some uh, stuff with, with the soldiers and people that are uh, dealing with some some issues. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the with the vets and uh, people that are still actively enrolled in the military. Um, a thing that we're doing now with with the with with the vets. It started off with just doing the vets with the PTSD, but now um, we have a website you can go to 7ddv.org, and on that website we're making it as a resource for emotional therapy support dogs. So anyone that feels they need a dog that helps them with to get through their day to day in the in in, in the world that you can get your dog certified, as we were talking about earlier, to be able to go into different places with you, hospitals, churches, wherever you feel that you need a dog that's gonna keep you calm, that's gonna keep you happy, keep your spirits up. Um, and that can be a returning um, service person, that can be a person that has had any form of trauma, but we're making it possible for you to have 
a dog in your world. So which that that's very important. That just goes back to what we were saying with with the therapy vest here. That's what I'm talking about, man. Just just doing what you can. You know what I mean? It, it, I know the brother's a master trainer and he's an author or whatever, but when you when you sit down and talk with him, he's just a regular person just like you or me. We can all do something active to um, not only help these animals, but help yourself, man. I mean, you know what? Like, my day is infinitely better because – uh, Toriano brought Martin through here to hang out on my couch. Right. You know what I'm saying? This couch has seen a lot of action, and a lot of uh, people have sat here, and dogs as well. But uh, it's a cool, it's a cool dog, man. And I'm so it makes me happy to just see that they, you know, that uh, a cat's got rescued and found a, a a forever home. You know what I mean? I'm sure when he get when he opens his eyes tomorrow, he's gonna be on one. But he's right. he's relaxed. <laughs> he's all yoga out. Brought to you by Pitbull Energy Drink. Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. Conversation with a pit bull live. You just saw me and uh, and I'm speed reading. Hey, <laughs> it's a good book. You guys go out and pick this up. Go hit up iTunes, get you a copy, bro. That's right. Because you can't have mine. Mine is autographed, so you know if you catch it on eBay. That's right. I finished. I finished it in like no time. All right, and it's good reading. There's some pictures in there for those of you guys that can't read. It's got pictures, okay? So, uh, pictures. It's a, it's a, it's a, hey, and everyone who didn't make the show will be there next week. We'll have our chat back up. Fred Craig, Paula, everybody, and see you. Love you. This is this is this is makeshift quick turnaround. They said, "Hey, man, that's right. Uh, the studio's not open. All this other that's right. Of stuff. That's we right. Do it's a flood. All this. And I was like, man. Let's go down the street to forty-four dollars. Let's get it cracking. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's, That's what right. happens when you got some filmmakers. This is what we actually do. So. Hey man, you can't um, stop us. Anyway, the show is what it is because of you guys. Thank you everybody for tuning in all over the world. Thank you to our guest Josh Liddy. Thank you to Toriano. You know, and everybody that, that tuned in. Um, we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you for Dr. Dave's segment, and you guys stay tuned. That's we'll be right, back. Sergeant Stubby, baby, you heard it here. I'm a pit bull, and I approve this message.